In the name of our Creator, our Redeemer, and our Holy Sustainer. Amen. <laughs> One of those is in the morning mornings. We continue where we left off last Sunday with John's Gospel reading. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Pretty powerful words. But these words can also cause deep hurt for those who take them literally. If I am starving but have faith, will my belly understand? If I am homeless or in a war torn country with no access to water, will I still not have thirst? Our faith helps us to understand that Jesus offered us something greater than our physical needs. Our spiritual hunger and thirst will be satisfied through Jesus because his teachings lift us up beyond the sufferings of this world, the loneliness, the fatigue, the hopelessness, the depression, and the pain we may feel from time to time. Our focus is to go beyond all these and become part of a community that lives into this reality to give us support and comfort along our path in life. When the neighbors of Jesus heard these words, we suddenly see a strong backlash to what Jesus had offered. We have the privilege of the ages to share in this faith-filled offering, but these contemporaries were appalled. Again, I offer the disclaimer that the Johannine community, the followers of John, was a community in distress and fear and out of sorts due to the fact that they were being nudged out of the Jewish synagogues. The Jewish rabbis and people were not being mean or manipulative. They understood that the two communities of faith were at a crossroads, and the Johannian community needed to make the break. All through the ages, there have been splits in communities of faith. Some are quite painful, and we have experienced our own in the Episcopal Church during these past few decades. We want to cry out, can't we all get along and accept each other with our common ground and our diverse ground? Sometimes it just doesn't work, does it? According to a survey done in 2012, there might possibly be as many as, many as 33,000 plus Christian denominations. 33,000 plus. Why? Even in our very own Episcopal churches in Utah, each church has a different flavor. It is human nature when people of like minds stick together. But we must never forget that we are also an inclusive church that welcomes all and we don't check our brains at the door. We can agree to disagree in order to be open to all. No one wants to have an automaton congregation with everyone thinking the same, really, we don't. Variety is the spice of life, and diversity is something to celebrate and cherish rather than fear or disengage with someone who may hold different thoughts on subjects, whether it be politics or sports. We can only be one if we invite and keep engaged those who come here to worship God, who is one and one only. Although each of us perceives God in our own individual ways. That is God's gift to each of us. Engage our brains to question, to explore, to grapple with the tough things in life by being open to all sides of the question or point of view. The people who belong to the community of John, whether they all realized it or not, were headed in a new direction. Having just come from the Shakespeare Festival in Cedar City, although I did not see Romeo and Juliet, I refer to one of his lines, parting such sorrow. Or maybe it was more like this, new birth can be mighty powerful, but can it be a real labor of life experience? It was emotionally difficult for this community, so their reaction was to point and wag the finger at the Jewish community they were leaving. If these words of John had disappeared way back then, had not been compiled, then there would have been more understanding of the context of the time. 
Unfortunately, our Jewish brothers and sisters have suffered unfairly by negative comments and blame ever since. We can never, ever forget that Jesus was Jewish as well. I am the bread of life. These words waken those in Jesus' presence. The crowds have been so amazed at the feeding of so many people with so little resources were beginning to fall away from this new idea. Wait a minute. Who does this rabbi think he is? He cannot compare himself to God, can he? Is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? Why, we have known this kid since he was a baby. A youngster with skin knees and when his teeth fell out as a six-year-old. A young man doing carpentry work with Joseph. How can he now say, I have come down from heaven? This is impossible. This is blasphemous. Jesus replied, do not complain among yourselves. A better translation is grumble. Do not grumble among yourselves. Haven't you already experienced a life-changing moment back there in Bethsaida? Did you not get filled with what you ate and were completely satisfied? How can you get it one moment and then the next start grumbling? Do you, do we always have to be argumentative? Then in John, no one can come to me unless drawn by the Father who sent me, and I will raise that person up on that last day. That hymn might be resonating in our brains right now. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Could this crowd of people hear Jesus through their grumblings and their horrified reactions to what Jesus was telling them? Remember, in their tradition, Jews could not even see, say that one special name of God because that was a blasphemous act. So they had to come up with two or three other names for God. Now, this man Jesus is claiming that he not only comes from God, but is the bread of life. Shocking, outrageous, oh, the anger towards Jesus was being stirred up here right now. Then Jesus invokes the story of their ancestors' experience with the manna. The bread the Lord gave them took care of their physical needs. People still die, however, because they were human. Jesus then tries to turn their attention to this new idea that Jesus as the bread of life gives them eternal life. Jesus has left their earthly physical life behind and has guided them towards their spiritual life that goes on after this world. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. How many do you think bristled at this? Was there even more anger present in the crowd now? Think back to that beautiful start of John's Gospel. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was of God, and the Word was God. And the Word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen His glory. The glory is of the Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. From His fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God but in Jesus. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the heart who has made him known. Those who had already heard John's gospel in the early days would have remembered this. God incarnate. Jesus the Christ became one of us to carry out God's work in this world of humans. Without a deep abiding faith in God and all the wondrous things God can do, it would have been impossible for people to get this for the very first time. In the next couple of weeks, we will go even deeper into the reactions of the people and the explanations Jesus gave to them. But let us jump quickly back to Elijah in 1 Kings. Elijah was doing a great deal of work for the Lord, and he had been placed in danger for carrying out the Lord's words as a prophet. Elijah had just had a huge triumph of the 
priests of Baal, the pagan set of gods that King Ahab supported through his wife Jezebel. Elijah ran for fear of his life and found himself in the wilderness under a solitary broom tree. He begged the Lord to take his life. Why? Because Elijah felt alone, abandoned, and worthless, for I know better than my ancestors. He fell asleep, but the angel of the Lord came to nourish him two times. When nourished by the Lord, Elijah received new strength and revived spirit to return to the wilderness for forty days and forty nights to Horeb, the mount of the Lord, where Elijah would indeed meet his Lord. So this concept of the food from the Lord was not something new to this crowd of Jews. They had passed on miraculous stories of their ancestors who had met the Lord, sometimes face to face, and wondrous things had occurred. So in a way, this was not something that came out of the blue for them. Yet, this was Jesus, again a man whom they knew. How could his words ring true? Jesus had compared himself to God, and this was not easy to accept. Doesn't our human nature bring on doubts when we first hear something that challenges us beyond what we know is the so-called norm? Echoes of, well, how do we always end up this way should spring to our minds right now. Jesus imparted to his disciples and all who listened the knowledge and love of God that truly passes all understanding not an easy thing back then, and it still troubles some of us today. Next week, again, we will encounter more of Jesus' incredible teaching. Let us pray from Stephen Shakespeare. Unseen God, drawing all people to the end of our desires, teach us to know true bread from false, and to feed on him who shares our flesh, to share your love, Jesus Christ, our communion.